So I'm going to do this uh, E minus S problem, which is a horrible problem. Um, if I saw this on, on test day, I would skip it and feel fine about it, because um, this is a really tough problem. Um, it's hard to do this anywhere near two minutes, even if I've already done it before. Um, so let's start off with a big picture. There is, it's very long and wordy. It's very important to understand what is going on here. So in general, what's going on here is they're saying, we've got this terrible system for how to estimate a sum. We've got a bunch of numbers, and they're all some random decimals or whatever. But if we add them up, uh, we've got this terrible, horrible system for, for how to estimate. We round some of them up, and we round some of them down, and then we add that. And then they ask, uh, you know, what's the difference between the estimate and the actual sum? So when they put it that way, and they say E is the estimate minus S, and that's the actual sum, what they're saying here, what they're saying here is, you know, how far off is your estimate, right? If E is the, is the terrible estimate that we just uh, generated, and S is the actual estimate, then this is the difference. In other words, how far off are you? Um, so... Another thing I want to look at is, is the phrasing of the question. So they didn't ask, what's E minus S? If they had asked that, what that means is there's a number, right? It's just 10. But they didn't phrase it that way. What they said was, which of the following is a possible value of E minus S? So because of that phrasing, what, what that means is there's a range. If they had said, if they phrased it like this, you know, which of these could it be? The word could or can, that also implies sort of a range. And generally speaking, when there's a range, we're, we, we need to do a max-min situation. This, we want to maximize something and minimize something and find the greatest sort of disparity that we can and then the smallest disparity that we can. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now... Before I launch into the max-min part of this problem, I want to make sure that we understand how this terrible estimating system works. Um, so <clears throat> what they're saying is if you, if you have a number like, say, 9.4, then since the tenth digit is even, I'm going to round this up, and uh, we're going to call it 10. Now notice that 10 is the estimate. And 9.4 is the actual sort of number. And so the disparity between them, if we subtract, it winds up to be 0.6. See that? So this here would be like E minus S, just for that one number. And it's, it's positive 0.6, right? It's, it's over by 0.6. So we're just trying to understand by a simple example how this works. Um, now, they might also have... Because they never said it only has one decimal. It could have lots of decimals. So we could have also had something like 9.4635, you know, which is horrible. This would still get rounded up to 10. right? And if it got rounded up to 10, then the disparity between them is some awful number like you know, 0 0.5, what is that, 365 or something like that. Anyway, uh, so this is awful. But that's the disparity between the two. So just a couple of examples to see like what, what it could be. Now, let's actually make a full list of, of you know, different possibilities. It could be something like 9.2. Well, I mean, I'm not going to make a full list because there's a billion possibilities. But it could be something like 9.2, 9.4, 9.6, 9.8. And if I keep rounding these up, they're all going to get rounded up to 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And then the disparity between the two, or E minus S, it winds up to be 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and 0 0.2. Right? And each of these, I'm going to put a plus next to it, because that's essentially saying it's too big by 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and 0.2. All right. I hope my hand raising isn't too bad. So we've sort of fully understood what's going on. It's already been four minutes <laughs> just to understand what's going on. Let's actually solve the problem. So what I'm going to try to do is be organized and try to find um, the difference between these. And I'm going to try to maximize it and minimize it. So let's take some notes here. There's going to be 
Uh, it's going to be numbers that have an even tenths digit. There's going to be numbers that have an odd tenths digit. Uh, they also told us one third of them has a, an even tenths digit, and one third of 30 is 10. And then the other 20 are odd. Okay, That's just like one extra little bit of like work they, they put in there. But there's going to be 10 of these that are even, and then each of these get rounded up. I'm just putting an up arrow. And then the, the 20 odd ones, they get rounded down. So I'm going to do something sort of similar to what I did over here on the left. I'm going to try to figure out what is the maximum difference and what is the minimum difference. So looking at our earlier examples, we kind of see that the maximum looks like 0.8, right? So let's just say I'm going to write here um, the, the extreme, okay, the maximum min. Uh, I'll just write the, the actual number, S, like that. And what we see is if we really want to uh, make the overestimate as big as possible, then we need, need to make that decimal as small as possible. So that's going to be 9.2, right? In fact, it could be 9.2000 or something like that, right? Um, but whatever. Now, when you round it up, how do I, how am I going to put this? Um, I'm going to skip the 10, right? We're going to round it up to 10. And then essentially what we could see is this is going to be over, over by 0.8, okay? Now, if all of these numbers end in 0 0.200000, then they're all going to be over by 0 0.8. I'm actually going to put a plus sign here to show that that's that that these are each going to be too big by 0.8. I think the best way to maximize this is to assume that all 10 of them end in 0 0.2. They don't have to be 9.2. They can be anything 0 0.2. All of those get rounded up to the next integer, and they would all be over by 0 0.8. And so the total the total difference of e minus s for just these even ones, um, it's going to wind up to be 0.8 times 10, right? So those alone are going to be making e minus s, making the estimate, it's going to be too big by 8. Now, let's look at the minimum that it could be over. So the minimum is actually a little tougher because I showed here in my column 9.8. We can write 9.8. That's not actually the minimum, though. Okay, if we're rounding up, then we need the tenths digit to be 0.8, but then we can put a bunch of stuff after it, like 999. Okay, so it's kind of stupid, but but it could be 9.8999. So when we rounded it up to 10, then 10 would only be too big by about 0.1, and then like 0, 0, 0, 0.001, something like that. Okay, and I'm not doing the math exactly right. I could put more nines. Um, but you can see that it's basically just barely over point, point 0.1, okay? Now, again, if we really wanted to minimize the overestimate here, then we would say they all ended at point 0.899999, and so they were all going to be point 0.1, the overestimate of each is going to be point 0.1000001, and there's 10 of them. So we need to multiply this by 10. So in the E minus S column, the total overestimate of each of these is going to be basically 1, 0.0001-ish, okay? Now, sometimes when I'm doing estimates and looking at the edges of things, I don't like to write 0 0.00001. I actually just write 1, and then I put a little plus sign here. And that's my note to self, that it's not 1, it's just like barely over 1. This is not really a mathematical notation. It's just an easy way for me to say, this is just, it's not 1, it's just a little more than 1. Anyway, enough on that. Um, so what we've seen is the maximum that the overestimate for these ones is, is plus 8. The minimum is it's got to be over by 1 or a little bit over 1. Now, let's do all this again for the odds. It's basically going to be the same process. So uh, what is the actual, let's just use 9 again, okay? So for the maximum and minimum, I mean, it's going to be looking at the decimal. This is going to get rounded down. So how do we minimize that? If we have 9 point, and then it's going to be 1, right? And we round that down, then it doesn't get rounded very far. And how do I make it as small as possible? Well, that is not just 0.1. It's going to be 0 0.1000, 000, 
which is, you know, 9.1. So how much is this under by? Because when we round it down, remember, the estimate is going to be smaller than this. The estimate is going to be 9. So 9 minus 9.1, well, that's going to be too small by minus 0.1. Okay? So fair enough. Now let's look at the, the other extreme. So 9.9. And if this is going to be rounded down, how can we make it as, you know, as far as possible, same, basically the same as the last one, I'm going to put a 999 here, okay? So basically saying we have to round this down by 0.99999. So that would be when we do um, 9 minus 9.99999, then, uh, then it's going to be under by minus 0.9999. You get the idea. Again, I can actually, I think it might be easier for me to just write this in my little weird notation, which is, this is not really 0 0.99999. I can write this as, it's basically 1, but a little bit less than 1. And I put a little minus up here, okay? Note to self, it's not 1, it's slightly less than 1, okay? And then I'm going to put a minus here because I'm saying that this is under by essentially 1. Now, let's finally do this part, the E minus S part. Because if we are going to uh, make this disparity as small as possible, then we're going to say that all 20 of them ended in 0.1. So we have to take the minus 0.1 in this under column and multiply it by 20. So if you multiply it by 10, you get 1. If you, multiply, if you double that, you get 2. So this, the total is going to be down by a total of 2. So just like in the first one, we have up by 8. I've got down by 2 here. Now this one's a little stickier. Um, so you could go with the straightforward 0.99999 and multiply it, or you could just say it's basically 1. I'll just use the it's basically 1 thing. So if we say basically 1 and multiply that by 20, then we get basically 20. Okay, So this is basically 20, except it's not really 20. It's actually a little bit less than 20. So I put a little minus sign here. So, you know, if you want to do the actual math, it would be something like, you know, minus 19.999, whatever, however many nines. Okay, so we've, we're actually, believe it or not, almost done. What we're, what we've finally done here is we've generated four different scenarios, and we're going to try to mix them together to try to make the total of all 30 of these numbers uh, sort of as close as possible to the actual sum and as far as possible. So we want to cherry pick uh, these four numbers and essentially figure out which one of these is going to be way too, uh, way too extreme on, on either end. So uh, we only get to choose one from the evens and one from the odds. So uh, if we pick, how do we, how do we make this number as big as possible? I would say, I would pick the, I'm going to circle this again in red, okay? If I want to make it as large as possible, I'm going to do plus 8, and then I want to subtract as little as possible, so I'm going to, I'm going to circle minus 2. In other words, if they all ended in 0.2, then it winds up to be over by 8, and if they all ended in 0.1, then that only was under by 0.2, or by, by minus 2. So all we do is we take the plus 8 and the minus 2 and add them. 8 minus 2 is 6. So 6 is one extreme. Um, now, what's the other extreme? Well, I'll do this in, uh, what color have I not used yet? Pink, I guess. So I'm going to do pink. Now, the other extreme is, how do I make this number as small as possible? Well, basically, we're just going to circle the other ones, okay? So the evens, if they all were like 0 0.8999999, we wind up with something that's just a little over 1. And if they were all 0 0.99999 uh, for the odds, then we wind up with something that's a little less than negative 20. Okay? Well, when you add these two together, we essentially get 1 minus 20. So this is minus 19. Cool? Um, so it's not exactly minus 19, but it's essentially minus 19. And remember, this is a range. So we can actually generate any number 
from 6 to negative 19 by, by just changing uh, the decimals, right? They did not all have to end in 0.2. Some of them could have been 0.4. So long story short, we can get any number from 6 to negative 19. So looking at the answer choices, they said for 1, 2, and 3, they said minus 16, 6, and 10, right? So I can pick anything that goes from 6 to negative 19 inclusive. Well, 10's out, right? That's too big. 6 is in, barely. And then minus 16 is in because it's larger than minus 19. So I would answer um, B. So that was a journey, but uh, that's the deal. Now, you could have, by the way, you could have made this problem much simpler on yourself if you ignored the hundreds and thousands digits and stuff, but it's a little dangerous. If you had said, instead of 9.8999, if you had done 9.8, just 000, and over here, 9.9000, then if we did all the rest of this, we would have wound up with a different, a slightly different answer. That answer would have been minus 16, exactly. Okay? And so minus 16 actually you know, barely fits. That's, that counts as this first one. Um, but that's actually not the extreme. And the only reason, I, I think that they actually, they already knew this problem was going to be very hard. And so they didn't make it all the way out to uh, minus 19 because that was just too tough. Regardless, though, if you want to be really safe, you should actually consider the fact that there could have been that 999 at the end. Anyway, this problem sucks, so I don't blame you for looking it up, um, but I guess that's my explanation, so I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs>